Welcome back! In this video, I want to go step by step through each of those scripts that drive different uh, type of rigid body in a platformer example. The link to this example will be in the description, you can download it and uh, open it up in Unity, I think, 2020.3.22f. Uh, so in the project you should see assets folder and there are scripts, so here are the scripts that we are using as well as the prefabs, so player dynamic force, uh, dynamic velocity and kinematic movement. Now the implementation of the scripts is pretty naive, but it should give you an ex idea of how to use those different rigid bodies. So first of all, let's go back to our cloud movement. So here I have already shown you that to move our cloud we do not need to have a rigid body because those clouds will not collide with anything else. We can use transform to translate and what we do here is have some parameters like limit x so the max position on the x axis after which we should destroy our cloud the speed and since our cloud is a ui object we need to have a reference to a rect transform what i do is in the update use transform.translate and here i need to pass the vector of the movement so minus vector 3 dot right so this will be the left direction times the default speed times time dot delta time i could of course use transform dot position and basically i could use plus equals and add the same statement to move my cloud the same way because basically we need to apply a new position so we use the same position and add to it uh, this uh, movement vector that we have here and what happens later is basically every frame i'm checking if direct transform local position dot x is less or equal to the limit of x and if it is that it means that i want to destroy the cloud and inform the cloud manager to respawn the cloud on the other side of the screen and the effect is simply the clouds that are moving to the other side of the screen will at some point be destroyed and will be respawned on the other side. Okay, so we have our clouds and here is the example of using uh, the transform to move our objects. Now another example we need to go to the prefabs and let's select our player dynamic force. So player dynamic force is a, a player moved using a rigid body that is dynamic. And this dynamic rigid body has the gravity scale of 1, so this means that we are going to affect, uh, the gravity will affect our player. We also set the constraints to freeze rotation Z, so I do not want the player to rotate on the Z axis because basically it would fall down. So I do not want that. And of course, uh, the uh, using the force requires us to uh, uh, apply to our platform some sort of a material. And if the physics material has the friction set to, on it, the force will be decreased by the friction force that affects our player. So basically, if we set the force to zero and we try playing, we are going to see that our player will keep on sliding because nothing is stopping it. So this is a very precise simulation of the physics uh, and how the physics movement would occur but basically it is not great for our purpose of an arcade style uh, of a game and let's go to our player dynamic force beside the rigid body we of course have a capsule collider which simply is a collider that is on our player and we of course have our custom script so let's click on those three dots and edit the script Great. This will be very similar to other scripts. At the top we have the reference to the rigid body, speed, jump speed and max speed vertical. So this is the limit of a speed that I want to apply on uh, to move my player so it doesn't move too fast. I'm going to save the input in the horizontal input float value. So this is the horizontal input on the X axis. So right and left arrow. And I have the animator and sprite renderer doesn't really matter for the movement. And I also check if it, uh, we are grounded by, uh, but basically this is all for the animation purposes as well as the sound are for the game feel. So we have in the awake, we get the rigid body uh, reference. And in the update, this is pretty important, we get the input, the uh, input.get axis horizontal, because if we get it inside our fixed update, we are going to experience a very jagged movement and very unresponsive uh, input system. Next, we handle movement direction and handle ground check. Those are all responsible for the animations, so you can check them out on your own. And we have this uh, handle jump input as the last method, which is interesting to us. 
basically what happens if is if we click spacebar and if we are grounded we play a sound play at the animation set is grounded to false and use rigid body to the add relative force and we add the force in the up direction in relation to the player coordinate system so add relative force as a force to the rigid body relative to its coordinate system the add force method would use the world coordinate system this might not always be what you want so that's why we want to use the coordinate system relative to the player so according to how our player is rotated and what we do is simply give it a vector up times the jump speed and use the force mode to the impulse because basically uh, when you jump all the power or, or max velocity is applied when you start jumping and then you gradually fall down so basically that's what happens here and in the fixed update we have the calculation of the force vector now to calculate the force vector we get the horizontal input on the x-axis of the new vector 2 times the speed times the time dot fixed delta time basically to make our movement frame rate independent we need to use the fixed update if we take a look at the documentation we can see that the fixed update allows us to frame rate independently affect the physics calculations so that's where we want to put all the modifications applied to the rigid body 2d at least if you want to have a, a most accurate simulation that uh, our physics engine can provide and if we take a look at the fixed delta time basically this is the interval between the physics frames so we can apply uh, so we can achieve basically the same movement across different machines since if we have a more powerful machine without this we may be moving much faster on a more powerful machine uh, compared to the uh, lower tire machine okay so basically if we calculate this we apply the rigid body to do again add relative force so we add the force in the right or left direction based on this vector and then all we need to do is clamp our velocity because if we do not do this we are going to keep on moving basically uh, in to the infinity and we are going to keep on speeding up so we set our velocity equals new vector 2 and we clamp our x uh, velocity between minus max speed and the max speed value and as the second parameter we pass the same rigid body to the dot velocity dot y basically our add relative force modifies the velocity internally and we need to clamp it so we need to reuse the same y value but we need to clamp the x value so we do not move too fast in the right or left direction okay so this is our dynamic force uh, force moved uh, player now we are going to select our player dynamic velocity and again if we press play we are going to see that the movement is much smoother it is much more precise and we can modify it and apply our own acceleration and the deacceleration so again uh, this makes it a more arcadish styled movement so again this has the same rigid body that is dynamic the same collider and the only difference is in our velocity script so let's select our velocity script and edit it and we are going to see that at the top basically this is the same script and the, the handle movement input is exa exactly the same and the only difference is in the fixed update we calculate the current speed based on the input times the speed times the fixed delta time so this is a float value and we clamp this speed using the same method mathf.clamp current speed and between minus max speed and uh, the max speed because we might want to uh, move into the left or to the right and we then apply it uh, to the vector 2 velocity equals new vector 2 clamp speed and again we need to reuse rigid body 2d.velocity.y because if we are jumping we need to keep on moving downwards or in the diagonal direction that's why we need to include it and here we can of course add some acceleration to it and then all we need to do is set rigid body 2d.velocity equals the velocity and that's it last prefab that we have is the player kinematic movement now this is a very naive approach to create this because basically what we need to do is on our own detect the collisions and act according to what happens so we do not have by default the detection of the ground and uh, nor do we have the gravity we need to apply it all through our custom script and as you can see this gives us this jumping on top of the platform because there is no collision detection or our physics to the engine doesn't affect our player all it only informs us that there might be a collision between our capsule collider to the through the triggers so again 
we have our rigid body 2d that is set simply to kinematic now we have the third option static but basically static means that uh, something is not moving and it also needs to have rigid body 2d to receive the event of a collision basically this is it here for the capsule collider this is the same component and we have this player kinematic movement script which is a bit different than the previous ones if we click on those three dots and edit the script we are going to see that at the top it looks exactly the same now maybe those values are a bit different set in the uh, inspector but one thing that differs is this vector 2 movement vector equals vector 2 0 basically what we need to do is calculate on our own the force that is the result of all the forces that acts upon our character so if there is collision we need to apply the collision force on our own to our movement vector and at the end we can apply this movement vector to our rigid body so this is uh, for really custom movement and it is mostly useful to create a very simple or very basic movement like in the space example a uh, space shooter example that i have shown before Basically, what we have uh, is in the awake, we uh, do the same thing. In the update, we set our movement vector dot x to be the input value. There are slight changes here in those two methods. Uh, the handle movement direction is the same, but the handle ground check here, we need to check if we are grounded or not. And basically we need to set the movement vector dot y equals zero because if we are grounded and if our movement vector has y value less than zero, we are going to simply fall down through the platform since there is no collision detection in the kinematic rigid body. We only get the information that there is a collision trigger, but the physics engine doesn't affect our player. So this is a bit different here. And basically uh, what we do is in the handle jump input, we also have a different story here because we need to set the movement vector dot y to the to be the jump speed so the maximum value and we need to have this uh, coroutine that allows us to start again checking if we are grounded after 0.5 seconds so we do not uh, immediately get grounded and get the movement vector y set to zero so this is a very naive and very uh, unreliable approach to create this but this is an example and in the fixed update what we need to do is check if we are grounded if this is false we need to decrease the y value of our movement vector since gravity is negative we use plus equals the minus 9.81 times the fixed delta time and then at the end after calculating all the forces we use rigid body to the move position and we need to pass the rigid body to the position so the current position plus the vector of the movement uh, multiplied by the fixed delta time to keep the movement consistent and again this move position needs to be called in the fixed update to have the consistent movement while the up uh, in the update we are going to get the input from the player to uh, get the feel that the player has complete control over the character so if we go back to our game if we try pressing play we are going to see that uh, again there is no acceleration the acceleration we control by th through our script how our player is moving but this gives us uh, no for example collision detection when we jump up and it is all dependent on our uh, raycast since the raycast has detected that we are grounded our feet of the player are too high above our terrain but again, this is how you would use the kinematic movement to create your character movement in a, for example, platformer game. Thanks a lot for watching. If you have enjoyed this video, leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. It really helps me a lot. See you in the next video.